we, we talked earlier about the, the tendency to, to have a problem and want to rush on to a solution. And, and case, you know, case reasoning isn't like that. We're taking every opportunity to get smarter about the situation by describing, then interpreting, then this business of identifying stakes. Um, it's really easy to just think about what I went into the classroom to do and evaluating it entirely from my point of view. I'm, I, we're all in the middle of our, our own universe, right? I'm, I'm acutely aware of what I'm trying to do, right? Of how I'm affected, right? Of what could happen to me. Um, part of becoming an adult and a teacher is to start to notice what's at stake for other people right? from their point of view, what they could gain or lose. And that's why we put this phase in, into the case writing, to practice that, recognizing what other people have at stake. If you switch around and you know, think like a student, we admire teachers who are aware of what we have at stake as students. This is where you practice at that, mm -hmm. the identification of students. So having little experience with the art of perceiving other people's stakes, mm -hmm. what kind of tools, what kind of methods could somebody use for being able to, based on an interpretation, start to figure out what could be at stake? Are there, are there boundaries around things? To me, the, the logic is fairly straightforward. It's something like this. If this, if, this, if this hypothesis holds, if this is what is occurring and why, then who could gain or lose what? Let's go back to being into one of those combative things with a student. If that's our hypothesis, that the, that the student and I have participated in this escalating conflict pattern, right, which has gotten so bad that I'm now having to think about it very carefully, and that's why I'm working on the case. Or if it's the situation that the, this is a person who I never even noticed before, that that's my, my interaction with this person is I'm sort of unaware of her, right, and all of a sudden that has sunk, come home to me, and I'm trying to fix that. Um, if that's the hypothesis, then <coughs> some things follow. It's pretty easy to say that she might be losing out right, if I'm ignoring her. That's you can go there pretty quickly. Uh, what might others be losing? Do you ever have the experience of uh, failing to get one of the smartest students in the room to share that with other students? Mm -hmm. And finally you get a writing assignment and you say, damn. I could have been asking that person to contribute that every day for the last three weeks. I mean, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not just her, it's not just me, right? It could be other people around. Now, yeah. I don't know if that's responsive to your question, but how do you go about it? For me, but, but for me, it's just you take it, like you said, you take it in a hy hypothesis at mm -hmm. a time. You say, if this is how it's working, then who could gain or lose what? And you try to think broadly about it. In the case that you gave, or in the situation you were describing, maybe some of those other students weren't part of your description. But in the, you know, as a, as a uh, result of identifying stakes, you start to think, well, if I did get this student to contribute, other people outside that you know, initial kind of sphere mm -hmm. of attention from the description may benefit. Every stage can make you go back and, and um, try to recall more. Yeah. And, and enrich and the description. Add to your you start to say, how are other people being affected? Yeah. Um, and what are they doing yep. and saying in the situation? Right. Mm -hmm. And to add it in. So you go back and can yeah. add to your description. Right. So at least it's me, that particular student, and the other student. Mm -hmm. But I can think of uh, <coughs> I can think of reason to go further. Suppose, for example, that um, because you're worried about a student's non-achievement, this is one of the quiet ones, you've started to notice the grade book and the work starts to show you that mm -hmm. you're not getting this done, right? You're not getting this done with this kid. Suppose that part of the history here, you've been sending home notes to parents. But one of the things you have to ask about is how are the notes affecting the relationship between the kid and the parent? If you think they're getting home, right? then that's another question. Yeah. Yeah. But if you think they're getting, how is that stream of notes affecting the kid's relationship with the parent? What's, what, what, what happens when these notes go home? They're not good news. 
-hmm. How are they responded to? So I don't know how far, but that's, the, but that's not a leap into the dark, right? No. It's, no. That's in the local social system, because you're sending the notes home. It's not, it's not just grades and scores. <coughs> when, no. s when somebody has a hard time responding to questions in the class, then we need to think about what the experience is like for them to go through that. That each time they get called upon, they're unable to present. They get the sense that they haven't presented anything that's valuable because of the, because of the hesitation of the response right, back to them. And they have to wonder what that's doing to perceptions of the other students, of them. Especially if you're thinking that you're trying to build the kind of classroom environment in which people are willing to take risks. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's similar to the interpretation. Here in the identification of stakes, you've got a chance to, to build your a lot, capacity for empathy with other people. Mm -hmm. um, I can't imagine anybody's idea of a teacher, effective teacher, doesn't include considerable ability to empathize, right? to be able to imagine the situation of the people they're working with. In the interpretation we do that, in this identification of stakes we can do that. We can become more aware of, of, of what life is like for the people we're working with. Um, and so we'll be wiser about making decisions that affect them. Yeah. This, is a way of, you know, this is a way to work toward being more fully able mm -hmm. to recognize your duty to the people around you. Yeah. I, 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 so I want to pursue the, I want to pursue the business of I think we do think of empathy as being pretty much a virtue in its own right. But it isn't necessarily a pedagogical virtue unless it helps to, us to teach them better. And so that's, as you were pointing out, that, mm -hmm. that's where it goes. Yes. Um, we, we find out stuff that lets us do a better job for people. We, and, we, and we get smarter about what a good job amounts to. Right? We, 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 can, we can't think of all this stuff when we start. But gradually, we can become more aware that what's at stake is not just the assignment we gave from the point of view that we gave it, and not just the rating on that assignment, but also relations between us and the kids, between, among them, them and their parents. Um, so we become clearer about all that. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, and this gets back to our, our last guest speaker, um, whose uh, who's experience as a, a special needs teacher um, really shown through and, and probably the biggest take-home message I think was as a, as a teacher working with special needs students if you can't start by answering the question what's the purpose of what I'm doing in the classroom I mean coming coming face to face with that question mm -hmm. is important and I think this this notion of empathy I think is one way to do it because sometimes your purpose involves no small amount of awareness that this is going to be very useful for these students or for my class as a whole because I have a sense of what they need. You were talking about moving kids around to different places in the room. Mm -hmm. And frequently, in my experience as a teacher, students interpreted that as punishment sure. from me. You know, that my purpose was to get them yeah. because of their bad behavior. If you're talking too much, you're going to be up here, and, and there's punishment involved. Mm -hmm. and, and my considerable work with them, you know, w was, to, was to show them through all, a number of moves that I made that the decisions I made regarding them had, had one purpose, and that is their, their success in the classroom, their ability to, to do fine work to do better work, to, you know, achieve well, and never had anything to do with punishment or, you know, part of sort of a, a uh, you know, a, an attack on them. This is sort of how we think of considerate human beings. They're imagining such stuff, that they're capable of imagining that there are people in the room who will draw conclusions about a move that they, had, that they did not at all intend. That there are conclusions being drawn you do not intend. Right. And being able to imagine that might be so, you're going to mm -hmm. make you a better teacher. Mm 